as you may have saw from the title and thumbnail, I have a Nintendo 64 board that was from the trash. Literally, I paid nothing for this, but it wasn't just one, there was two that were in the trash, and both of these are PAL variant, can tell by the layout and the board revision at the top here, and I doubt either of them were working if they were put into the trash, so let's do some testing. Plug in my AV out, the jumper pack, power, and my chosen game, this time it's Pokemon Stadium, and then we can switch it on and see what happens. So it looks like I do have power because the power light is on, but unfortunately on the screen, I'll show you now, it's just a blue screen, not no signal. So let's go and try the second Nintendo 64 board just to see what happens. So here's the second Nintendo 64 board, so let's power it up, and it looks like it does power up similar to the other one because we have the power light, but again, unfortunately on the screen, there is no signal, it's just a blank blue screen. Let's go back to the first board and take a look and see what we can find. On initial inspection, it does look like it's quite a reasonably clean board, although not perfect. There's nothing obvious that's burnt out, smashed or damaged in any way, which is unfortunate because that could be quite an easy fix. But because there is some grime, I'm probably going to start by cleaning the connector itself, the inside contacts and underneath. Sometimes a lot of dust gets underneath. But this looks reasonably okay other than some flux left over from the manufacturer. So getting my girlfriend's toothbrush dipped in IPA, I'm then going to clean cartridge contacts on the board. With that all cleaned up, I'm going to move my attention to the rest of the board, all the ICs, because there's a little bit of dust and grime there. So I'm just going to twist and pull off these heat sinks. I'm surprised they're still on after all this time. Then re-dip my girlfriend's toothbrush in IPA and carefully clean all of the pins on this board. With that all cleaned up, I can focus my attention to the game cartridge itself and clean all of the contacts on there. Something I did notice while cleaning is there look to be some damaged pins here on this particular chip and some down here. I'm not sure what this will do, so let's test it before doing anything with them. Turn up the Nintendo 64 now, with everything plugged back in, let's flick it on and see if we get any picture. By the looks of it, unfortunately, there has been no change. So the next thing I'm going to do is check all the power that I can. I guess my multimeter, setting it to voltage, putting my ground probe off screen on a ground point, and then checking the voltages. So it looks like I have 3.3 and I have 12 volts. These are slightly higher and lower, but that's pretty normal. There is some points down here that are marked as 3.3. It looks like the first point is okay, and so is the second point. Moving over to the EV out, there is a 5 volt rail, and I do seem to have 5 volt. With all the known voltages looking okay, let's touch up those joints that look slightly bad or damaged just by applying some flux and reflowing them. With those questionable pins now reflown, let's set this Nintendo 64 back up and give it a test. Unfortunately, it still looks like blue screen. Because cold solder joints could be an issue, I'm actually going to reflow the entire AV connector just in case there was a cold solder joint here. If you are enjoying this video so far, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications. With all those pins done, let's set this back up with the AV cable power and the game and see if we get any video out now. Unfortunately, we still don't get any video. However, I'm not out of ideas yet. I am actually going to go and reflow the entire processor's pins in case there is any cold solder joints. I'm just going to use my solder iron for this and quite a bit of flux. So I've just done this leftmost IC to start with, so let's give it a quick test by setting it up. And it looks like that didn't help, so let's move over to the second main IC and reflow the pins on that.
with the second main IC done, I believe this one is actually responsible for the video. Let's plug it back in and see what happens. Unfortunately, still no picture at all. So at this point, I'm just going to reflow everything possible on this board because there's very limited amount of components. It's a reasonable task to actually do. So with all the main ICs and components reflown, let's set this back up. Unfortunately, still a blank blue screen. Which leads me to these capacitors. I am actually going to replace them with some electrolytic capacitors like here. This is a through hole capacitor, not really meant for the surface mount ones, but I don't have all of the values in the surface mount package, but the through hole capacitors should be fine. So to replace them all, I'm simply going to remove them with a hot air pencil. With that capacitor removed, it's important to note the polarity. This black line represents negative and that's on the square corners as you can see, which means my through hole electrolytic, the negative line which is represented by the white stripe, should match the negative pad and that's how I'll connect them. To prep these, I've bent the legs into shape and then I'm going to cut them to size because the shorter the legs, the more effective the capacitor is. Making sure the orientation is correct, I'm going to place it over and then solder it down to the pads. I'll then repeat this for all remaining capacitors. In some instances, like this capacitor here, I have to be careful of these wires on board because they are inductive. You can't have the capacitor leg touch it, so I've had to kind of bend it over the wire and then down to the pad. Finally, with all those capacitors now replaced with brand new ones, let's plug this in and see if that has solved our issue. Unfortunately, it looks like it hasn't solved our issue at all, and I'm a bit stumped on what else to do here. I've basically touched up all joints, there is nothing obvious going wrong with the power, no components have burnt out or blown up or are missing, and I've replaced all the old capacitors with new ones. If you have any ideas on what I can try, please let me know in the comments down below. I'll happily do a revisit for this board. So unfortunately, we couldn't save one from the trash, but maybe we can save the second one. This one is looking a lot better than the previous one. It's actually pretty much immaculate. So we'll start with the game cartridge connector and clean that and underneath it. Something I did notice with the game cartridge connector that could be our issue is this pin here actually has a tiny bit of corrosion, it seems to be the only pin with it, so let's give it a clean to remove that corrosion and give the rest a clean as well. With that cleaned up, let's push this back in, set it back up full test and see if we have picture. And unfortunately we don't have picture, just like the last one I've got my multimeter and I'm going to check the various voltages to see if we have them. So we have 3.3, we have 12 volts. Further down, we have two sections that are marked for 3.3. It looks like the first pin is okay, and so is the second one. And lastly, there is a 5 volt pin here, which is 5 volts. So this one is also okay on the voltages. The pins themselves and the ICs actually look good, unlike the first one which did have some questionable joints. So let's just give these all a quick clean with some IPA. With those cleaned up, let's set this back up for test and give it a go. Unfortunately, still no picture. So let's reflow the AV cable connector in case there is any cold joints. With that reflowed, let's set it back up again to test. Unfortunately, we still don't have picture, this isn't promising at all. This time, all the pins do actually look good on the Nintendo 64, there isn't any questionable ones, but I'm just going to refill the lot anyway, and see what happens after that.
with everything reflowed let's set this back up and give it a test and still despite this this one also does not produce picture so the last thing I want to try is replacing all those capacitors again with some replacements. Since I did most of it more in depth on the first one, I'll skip past most of this on the second one and just get straight to the point. So with all those capacitors replaced, let's give it one final test because this is the last thing I'll be trying to see if it works. And unfortunately, it still doesn't work. So despite my best efforts, these ones belong in the trash. I am completely out of ideas. I've tried my best. If there's any suggestions on how I can get these working, please let me know in the comment section below. Normally for episodes like this, I like to do a summary breakdown of the costs, but I didn't technically pay for these because they're straight out the trash. However, with the attempted repair costs and time spent, and if I was to sell these as faulty, I've definitely made a loss here. Perhaps, with the help of you guys, I'll be able to get these working and do a revisit on them. For now, these are just fancy paperweights. 